Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how you can start a video production company in 2021, despite everything that's happening in the world right now, and how you can sign clients and get paid regularly, even if you're starting out with no portfolio at all. So since we started our video production company a few years ago, a few things have changed, mainly the current climate. Now we've been using new strategies to help our students achieve their goals, and I'm gonna share some of those things with you in this video. Now firstly, there's a huge misconception about a production company over being freelance. And there's pros and cons, and I've done a video on this previously, but it's important for you to understand that just because you're growing a production company doesn't mean that you're not a freelancer, or if you want to remain a freelancer but you just want regular income, you can still use those same strategies that we use to grow a production company, in that freelance market so that you can still have the benefits of both worlds. I'm working with one guy in particular who's actually doing just that thing. He's working as a freelancer for other production companies and agencies and he also has his own video production company as well where he has clients paying him regularly and that provides the stability for him to then go on and do the things that he's really passionate about and work on those higher profile jobs that I'll be talking to you about later on as well. So if some of you are unsure if you want to stay freelance or grow a production company, it kind of doesn't matter because you can use these same strategies no matter to what. However, I'm guessing that 90% of you who are watching this video probably do want to grow a production company given the name on the title. So for you guys, it makes life a little bit easier if you choose one over the other because it means that you don't have to double up on these strategies. The guy in particular I was talking about has two websites, one for his freelance stuff, one for his production stuff. So every strategy that we implement, he has to do twice. So if you know what route you wanna go down, then it makes your positioning much easier because then when you introduce yourself, you can say that you have a video production company or you can say, I'm a freelance camera operator or whatever it is that it may be. So very generally speaking, you're gonna make more money as a freelancer initially, but having a production company means that you can scale it over time and then it will generally be worth a lot more and you can create a business that runs by itself and doesn't actually require you to be in it. So then when it comes around to retiring or selling your business, you have a really tangible asset. Whereas when you're a freelancer, you are the business. So when you stop freelancing, your business stops with that. You don't necessarily have these regular clients or systems and strategies in place. So that's something to think about for the future. There's no harm and jump in between the two. If you want to remain freelance right now, then jump to the video production company. But the sooner you understand where you want to go in your future, the easier it will be to actually position yourself a lot better. One of the biggest things that I see lots and lots of people do when they're starting out is they literally use the hope strategy. They sit by the phone hoping it's going to ring and that just never ever works. You are only going to get out what you put in and you really have to Find it within yourself to build up your courage to go out and outreach to people. I know that a lot of creatives find that side of things really hard, certainly a lot of people that I've met and that I've worked with, but you need to understand that everything that you don't have right now, the things that you're searching for, the things that you want in your life, all of those things are outside your comfort zone because if they were inside your comfort zone, then you'd already have access to those things. So building a business is definitely about stepping outside of your comfort zone and understanding that that phone isn't just going to ring with your dream client at the end of it. You actually have to make those stepping stones in order to achieve what you want to do. And over the next few tips, I'm going to really get into depth about exact strategies that you can use to help grow your business. So for those of you who are just starting out and you literally have no portfolio or no credibility in the industry at all, what can you do to start signing clients straight away and start getting some paid work? Well, generally speaking, you're gonna to have to use one of two of the following strategies, either a free of charge strategy, which means that you do work for free in order to build up your portfolio, but also you can have that with a view to sales. So when you speak to clients and businesses and say, look, I'm trying to build up my portfolio, can I perhaps do a project for free for you? And then after that, if you're happy with my work, we can perhaps discuss about future projects. So always try and have a view to sale down the end because you don't wanna be doing countless amounts of free projects, but it is really important because you're gonna need a portfolio in order to sign clients. The other strategy you could use, of course, is a swap strategy. So a swap strategy is when you would swap your services for like the equivalent amount in their products. So for instance, if I'm working with a watch company or I outreach to a watch company, I might say, hey, look, I'm, I'm looking to build my portfolio at the moment within this industry. Would you be happy to send me some free watches and in return, I will create this amount of content for you? Generally speaking, that's quite a nice way because product companies particularly are very what you call product rich cash poor. So they don't necessarily have a lot of cash to spend, but they do have a lot of products. So they're happy to do swaps with you that way. I currently teach a couple of people who are growing their production companies and have used this strategy to sign like five clients within a space of like 10 days because it's proved really effective. They've gone away, done a really good job on the actual capture and creative, which I'm sure you will do as well. And then they've gone back to the clients and said, look, this is the kind of stuff that we can produce. Would you be interested in 
having a chat about any future projects and the clients have of course been happy with their work so they've then been able to land the clients using those strategies so these things are very very simple but building a solid portfolio and creating some credibility is going to be a really important factor for you to grow your business if you're especially just starting out now, if you're getting a lot of replies to people that say no, and I'm gonna cover outreach as well in a moment and give you actually personal tips that I would use here in Perspective Studios. But if you're getting a lot of people consistently say no, then it's gonna generally be to do with your brand. How does your overall image look? So if you are trying to build a production company, this is really important. I speak to some people on a one-to-one -one mentoring basis, and one of the first things I will do is sit them down, look at their website, look at their email address and things like that. And generally speaking, they might be using a James at Hotmail or James Video Production at Hotmail.co.uk. Now that doesn't tell me that you're a very established or professional person, no matter whether you're a freelancer or whether or not you're building a production company. So that's really worth keeping in mind. Try and create a business from the start. And that's important, again, with that positioning strategy. If you know you want to be a production company and you want to employ a team of people, that doesn't mean you're not a production company right here, right now, because you can always outsource those things, right? So I was introducing myself as a production company way before I even employed a team of people because I knew that's what I wanted my business to do. I positioned it in the right way so that when I spoke to people or when I created my website and when I created my email address, it was Perspective Studio or Ross at Perspective Studios and that seems a lot more legit and a lot more professional than just having you know James video production at hotmail.co.uk businesses will generally take you a lot more seriously and you're gonna get a lot more leads if you actually use these strategies now building your strong brand isn't just about your email address or your website it's also gonna be about your social media feed so you need to have a think about creating an Instagram Facebook page for your business or even if it's you as a freelancer you need to be particularly careful that you're not posting photos of you out at the weekend and you're actually gonna be posting photos that are relevant to what your target audience are gonna to wanna to cover and that's another tip right now you need to work out who that target audience is going to be and I can share that information with you right now because it's, for me it's going to be exactly the same as you you're going to be looking to speak with marketing managers or business owners they're the two decision makers that will actually be able to employ your services so you don't want to waste your time talking to someone on the shop floor or someone in the accounts department or anyone like that you only want to spend your time speaking to the key people who can actually hire your services and small businesses are gonna be much better to speak to the business owner because they'll be much more active within that business. With larger businesses, it's gonna be the marketing manager if that particular company employs a marketing team. Now, if you do remain down that freelance route or you might wanna do the two side by side for a while, then as a freelancer, your target audience is gonna be other video production companies because you're gonna probably work as a freelancer for those other companies. So you need to make sure that your feeds represent the kind of content that they're gonna to wanna to see. They're gonna to wanna to see some behind the scenes. They're gonna to wanna to see portfolio of your work, screenshots, how are your editing skills, those kind of things. So make sure you're posting stuff that's relevant to your business no matter what route you go down because without a strong brand, you're not gonna have that backing of the credibility to go with your portfolio that creates the overall image of how you actually sign clients in order to grow a production company. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and jump on my computer and show you some really easy lead generation strategies that will help you get more leads to businesses, more chances for a sale as well. Now for those of you who don't know, easy lead generation or lead generation particularly means you're acquiring the email addresses, the phone numbers, the company data for the people that you want to outreach to. So they're not a client until you actually assign them, until they actually pay for your services. Up until that point, they're just a prospect or they're just a lead. And we generally will rank our leads from cold to hot. So a hot lead is something like an inbound lead. It's someone that reaches out to you and says, hey, I've seen your work, I would love to work with you. That would be a hot lead because they're interested in your services but you haven't yet decided what they want or been able to make a deal. Now, a cold lead is when you generally will outreach to someone who you've never met before and say, hey, I'm so-and-so and I'll share with you some outreach methods as well in a moment. So it's important for you to understand that because then you can focus on the leads that are the hottest because the hot and the warm leads are gonna be the ones that are gonna help you grow your video production business, whereas the cold leads are gonna be a lot harder. You have to warm them up first and it's all about understanding a process. You can't send one email and the next email they're paying you money it doesn't work like that there's a process that it has to go through generally will be set in a meeting so let's jump onto my computer and I'll show you how you can generate some leads to grow your video production business okay so I'm gonna show you a few simple strategies that you can use to get those leads in order to outreach them as well 
And what's really important, I think, is to focus on local businesses, people near you, because there's a real sense of community at the moment. Everything that's happened in the world has really brought people a little bit closer together and a little bit more personal. So what I wanna do is I wanna focus on the people in the local area that you can really help grow their businesses. You're gonna have a much better response rate through that as well. So firstly, what I don't wanna do is just head over to Google Maps. And once we're on Google Maps, we're just gonna search for, and you might want to look at like a specific niche. Like if your portfolio, for instance, is within sports, then you might want to focus on sports people because if you've already built up credibility or a portfolio in that specific industry, it's gonna make it a lot easier to get sales but you don't wanna to be too niche, specifically at the moment in time. Because could you imagine, if all you did was event work or hospitality work, do you think those industries are particularly thriving at the moment? No, they're absolutely not, right? So that's why it's important to have a diverse portfolio because when one industry shuts its doors, you've got another option in a different area as well. So I'm just gonna start by typing in some uh, stuff like businesses, and then you can see already, it's just brought up loads of options down the left-hand side here, okay? And what I would do is I would probably go a little bit more specific than this, so I might type in like, for instance, sports centers or um, personal training. And look at this, look how many personal trainers there are in this really, really small area. So personal trainers at the moment in time, are they doing their stuff from home? Do they need any help? Are they have got YouTube channels, things like that? It's probably worth having a chat with them. So then what I would do is quite simply just go through onto their website or I would click on one of these people and then it would come up with some details below and then you could obviously just phone them using that contact number or if you don't feel confident doing that, then obviously you wanna grab their um, information. So you would just click on their website and you'll have uh, probably a contact page somewhere, if we click on free consultation. And then you can email them through this, but I generally try to avoid these where possible because you don't really know where it's going. I always try and find a, an email address and luckily right down the bottom here, we've got this email address right here. So that's the one I would send the email to. But because they're fitness, they're probably a little bit more clued up on social media. So then I would go through, check out that Instagram page. And then from this, I would then probably drop them a message on here and just be like, you know, hey Max, love the content, etc., etc. Are you interested in having a having a chat? I see you already do some videos. Um, I definitely think I could like bring something new to it, or I could help you with this, this, that, and the other. Um, it should be able to get you, you know, a lot more sales or a lot more people through to your website, and, and then just have that chat with them. So that's a really nice, simple strategy. But also because they are in the local area, you can also you've got. You've then got a talking point. You've then got something where you can say, you know, hi Max, I'm in the local area, you know, just reaching out to businesses to see if I can help. We're a video production company. This is the kind of things that we do. Are you interested in having a chat? Is there something that we can help you with? Or, you know, I've checked out your website and I really think it can benefit from having a few more videos and, and people get to know you. That's definitely gonna help you with your sales. Are you happy to have like a free chat where there's like no obligation? And at minimum, you're gonna walk away with some information that you can help grow your business whether you work with us or not. And it's really nice because it builds up that, again, sense of community. So look at people in your local area, and this is a really um, effective strategy. Just type in industries that you're particularly um, interested in, or like I said, you can keep it quite broad with business and you'll get loads of options here. And I would definitely try and recommend typing in different keywords here, because some people might show for personal training, but other people might show for personal fitness or fitness coach or those kind of things. So keep it mixing up, okay? Next thing you wanna do, for those people who have exhausted all the options in their local area, then what I need you to do is go to Google and when you're typing in something, so you might type in, um, I don't know, let, let's type in boxing gloves, right? Um, now this might take us, uh, take us to some different websites, so I'll, I'll learn this as we go. So boxing gloves um, uh, and equipment, equipment. There we go, we type that in. Now on this first page, you're just gonna get loads of major brands. Like you've got Amazon, Fight Outlet, Sports Direct. These are huge businesses, right? In the UK particularly for, for my American audience. So you're not gonna have like, you're not gonna have any chance really in speaking to these if you're just starting out. You're gonna have a much better success rate if you scroll to the bottom, go to page five or later, 
five or later in Google, then you start to see a lot more smaller businesses and you're gonna have a much better success rate. So best gym equipment, these companies, etc. And then we would just generally go onto these companies and let's have a little look here. I haven't done any pre-research, so I have no idea what rabbit hole this is gonna lead me down. Um, so here we go, so it looks like, yeah, I mean, the website tells me it's a bit of a small business. They've obviously got some photos here, but how much better would a video look here? Or, you know, you could definitely do a better job than some of these things. So this is all we wanna do now is just find an email address. We've got a sales email address. Again, I'm gonna to wanna to try and avoid that. Um, so I've got no other contact things up here. So what I might do is I might just go over back to, um, back to Google now and I'm gonna take this bit here, the last bit of their email address, I'm gonna pop that into Google and I'm gonna put owner. Okay, great, comes up on LinkedIn straight away. Let's have a little look at him. So we're on LinkedIn, David Walker, he's the owner of the mer merchandise company that we were just looking at. He's based locally to me as well, which is absolutely brilliant. And then I would just connect with him, connect with him on LinkedIn. You know, this guy's obviously absolutely smashing it. I love his profile picture as well. And uh, you might even sometimes in their details and their contact information be able to find, there you go. I've got a personal email for David Walker, right? So I could just email him and just say, hey, you know, would you be interested in having a chat about this, that and the other? And again, we're focused on those marketing managers, the business owners. And that's a really effective strategy here. So that's how it can work on a slightly wider range. I was just lucky that this was a local business to me. Um, but if anyone wants to work further afield, then this is the same strategy you would use. So page five or later on Google. And finally, another really quick strategy is just using LinkedIn, right? Just searching for these businesses, searching for um, businesses that you've been made aware of, but you can't find their email addresses. Or you might just be able to join a marketing manager. So marketing managers there might be a group in here that just has loads of marketing managers or if it doesn't all people it's just listed me all people that are marketing managers within these various roles so I can click connect and I could just say something like add a note and I could say um, hi Bradley hi Bradley uh, I'm just looking to expand my uh, network it helps if I can spell work at this current time. I hope you're keeping well. All things con considered. Just send that, there we go, send that over to Bradley. Now when he connects with me, um, it will let me know. And once he does uh, connect with me, um, I'll just send him a message and I'll just say, hey Bradley, thanks for connecting. Um, you know, I'm just, you know, here's some recent work we've done you know, if you want to check it out. And then we'll just try and spark a conversation. Definitely try and build that rapport with these people first. Just don't go in selling. It's about coming across as a friend. Try and provide some value for them and just ask them, hey, would you be interested in having a meeting? And then you can start to warm up that lead from a completely cold lead into something warmer. And then you've got a much better chance of making a sale. So now you know how to generate those leads, it's all about outreach. And do you remember when I started this video, I said that you can't just sit by the phone waiting for your dream client to phone you. It's just not gonna happen. Trust me, I, that was one of the mistakes I made when I started out. And had I figured that a lot sooner, I would be in a much better position than I am right now. So make sure you're active with these things. You should be outreaching to around about 20, 25 people every single day. And it's a numbers game, unfortunately. You're generally gonna see around about a three to 5% success rate from doing cold outreach. Now you might think, well, Ross, that doesn't sound very good, but that's the same for everyone. And without doing that, you're not gonna gain new clients. Again, they're certainly not just gonna phone you because they found you on Google. Generally speaking, you're gonna have to actively work within these kind of groups and by doing lead generation so that you can then approach them and show them your services. It's actually no longer about who you know, it's about who knows you. And you need to put your brand out there in order for them to be aware that you even exist. Because how many other video production companies are there? We're not the only one in this area, there are so many and thousands of people come out of film school every single year doing exactly the same things. So we need to be doing something slightly different to what those guys are doing and these are why my strategies work because as a team here we're able to put our heads together, adapt quickly, we're able to give these ideas to our students as well, let them test these strategies and when, they know, when we know that they work I can create a YouTube video and share it to my wider audience. So now I want to share with you some of our best methods and strategies 
strategies for getting clients or certainly with outreach. Now I did a video on this last year about the number one platform to outreach on right now and that is still the same. We still have in such a huge success rate from Instagram over all other types of outreach methods. So I would generally suggest that you actually look down the Instagram route because you can be a lot more casual with it as well. But there is a strategy that works that is going to be implemented. You generally need to connect with these people, interact with their page and then send them a message. And you want to keep that message really brief, something like, hey, love your content, etc, etc. Would you be interested in having a chat? And what we're trying to do here, because of the current climate, all we're trying to do is set a meeting with these people. We're not trying to sell our services from day one. We're not trying to make sure the next email we get back is them asking us, you know, us to send them an invoice or anything like that. All we want to do is set a meeting. So you always want to make sure that when you're outreaching to these people, you use a little term in there like, is this something you would be interested in having a chat about? Are you interested in having a video meeting? Are you interested in X, Y, Z? And just change those end bits. So keep your outreach nice and short. And again, the one thing I see time and time again from new students is when they're outreaching and they're not having much success, I ask to look at their emails or their outreach methods through Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, anything like that. And generally speaking, there'll be really, really long emails, detailed saying, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so, this is what I do. I do this, this is how I studied, I learned this, I've got this camera gear, this, that, and the other. Um, you know, I just thought you should know and there's no call to action. There's nothing that entices that client to message you back. And also, these people are busy. They're busy people. They don't want to be reading through your whole life story. Just get straight to the point. And more importantly, how can you help them? It's all about the client here. It's not about what you can done and what you've achieved in your life and I, I, I. It's about what you can do for the client and how you can help their business grow. So you might want to have a little look at their website or their social feeds and say, hey, I've noticed a few things that you can implement yourself. Would you be interested in having a chat? Completely no obligation. And then I can see if I can help you further from that point. It's all about setting that meeting, getting that chat with them, getting them on the phone, and then you get a much better understanding of what they actually require if that's of interest to them. And for those of you who are just getting no after no after no, try not to get disheartened. Again, it's a numbers game. It's about reaching out to as many people as possible, but also for them saying no and actually replying to you is a really positive thing because what you're doing is you're able to now sift through the people who are actively wanting video and photo services versus people who are just not interested. So people who still think that video is just you know not relevant whatsoever in the current world. So by them saying no, it's completely fine you could just siphon them off. So don't take it as a personal attack on your business. Don't take it as them saying no because I think your quality of work is really bad or no because I don't like you as a person. Generally speaking, it's a no because they don't see any value in video content at the moment in time. And a no now isn't a no later. So anyone who does say no, put them on your mailing list, six months time, drop them a message. Hey, you know, I just thought I'd get back in touch. Has anything changed? Because at some point in time, all of those businesses who say no will want your services. And that's a really effective way to grow your production company. And that's a strategy that we use. We've reached out to thousands and thousands of people. And of course, 90% of those people, we don't do any work for, but they get an email every so often. And every year we'll get like another five or six clients perhaps from people who had previously said no, and now they wanna work with us. So it's all about being in the right place at the right time. So what is the quickest way that you can grow your turnover for your video production company? Because we all need money, right? We all need money to buy new equipment, to employ people, to buy a studio, to develop the studio. All of these things requires money. So how can we maximize the spend per client? So how much they spend with you? How can we maximize that? Because at the moment, all you're doing is offering videography services. So we need to think about additional services and that can be anything from social media handling to photography. Um, you can even do drone work as well. Think about what additional services can you offer that client to provide more value to that business. But you can also charge a little bit more for each one of those things. And again, if you're working with a small business, one of the things to keep in mind is that they probably don't know that much about Instagram marketing, Facebook marketing, or anything like that. Now that's one of the things that I do cover within my course, but you can obviously figure this stuff out yourself if you want to learn the longer way. But once you know that knowledge, you can then 
start to sell that as a, an additional service. So instead of that client perhaps paying you, let's say a thousand pound for a couple of videos, you can now add on, you know, the cost of a drone pilot. You can then add on, and you might want to outsource that as well, by the way, you don't actually have to personally do this. You can outsource that as another team member. You then might want to add on social media handling. You might want to post it on their behalf. You might want to run a campaign. You might want to boost that post and you can start to charge a little bit more. So all of a sudden you've got this client that was just going to spend a thousand pound with you. They're now going to spend closer to 1500 pound and if you do that on each one of those clients you are going to be able to maximize your revenue and that's going to enable you to grow your business a lot quicker and understand this from a client's point of view as well yes you're creating an upsell yes of course you're getting more money but the general purpose here is to make sure that you can help that person achieve their goals if they don't know anything about running a Facebook advert but you do is that going to help their business yes or no yeah, of course it is, right? So you're gonna be adding value to them and you're gonna be able to allow them to achieve their goals much quicker too. And that's the quickest way to grow your business by increasing that spend per client. Okay, I hope you guys are finding this video really useful. I know it's a bit of a long one. If you are enjoying it so far, then please let me know in the comments. I reply to absolutely everyone. Drop a like and if you're not following me already, if you're not subscribed, then please do take the time to do that. It really does mean a lot to us. I think almost 90% of people who watch our videos are not subscribed to the channel and that's hard breaking because we put so much time and effort into this and I am really sharing everything with you that you need to know to grow a video production company. Now the video doesn't end here, I've still got a load more things to talk about, client handling, retainer systems, monthly paying clients, big jobs versus small jobs and camera gear. So make sure you've still got your pen and papers, you've got another new notebook and continue filling that out and taking as many notes as you can. And for any of you who would like a step-by-step -step walkthrough about any of the things that I talk about today, then please do go and check out the Perspective Academy. It's my online training platform. We have over 158 videos covering everything you could possibly know. There's over 26 hours of online coaching and I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. And it really is a step-by-step -step walkthrough to how to exactly do these things. And also on top of that, you will also get access to our premium members Facebook group where I hold uh, bi-weekly live Q&A. So if you've got any particular problems that you're stuck on personally, then all you need to do is jump into a live Q&A and ask me that question and I'll be more than happy to help you on a personal basis too. Okay, so client account handling. Why is that important? Some of you might not even know that this is a thing. It's basically how you look after your clients. Now, if you are running a video production company, it is imperative that you look after your clients. Because in a freelance mindset, what we'll generally do is we'll work on one project and then we'll work on the next project and then the next project and then the next project and we forget about these clients. Running a video production company, the most important thing is that you look after your clients. The first client you ever sign, you make sure you look after them because it's gonna cost you so much more by outreaching to thousands and thousands of new clients just to bring in one client than it will be to look after your existing ones and keep them coming back to you keep them happy and some simple things that you can do is quite simply take note of when their birthdays are take notes of their life events and then send them you know a birthday card a christmas card these kind of things just to let them know that you actually really care about them that's how we've built a stable solid business here because we have really strong foundations with all of our clients from day one to now all of these people and we have over 30 clients we look after and care for every single one of them because they keep coming back to us we've had our own clients that have been pitched to by other video production companies and they've come to us and said ross we've had this video company come to us they're cheaper than you but we don't want to go with them because we really value how much you give to us and how much you look after us i mean what better position to be in clients that are actually really happy to come back to you no matter how much you charge because they know they're gonna get amazing service. So make sure that you do look after your clients the best you possibly can and please don't forget about them because it's gonna really hinder the growth of your video production business. Now, this is quite possibly the most important thing and my favorite topic to talk about in my online course. This is the main thing that I cover and it's getting paid regularly creating a predictable cash flow because if you don't have a predictable cash flow within your video production company then you're not going to be able to grow you're not going to know if you have guaranteed enough money coming in every month to move into a studio to employ a team of people to buy the latest camera gear because if without that predictable cash flow it is not possible to know if you can scale your business 
So we've developed a system called the RCP system, and I go into tons of detail about this on that course, and it's a retainer system effectively. It's a regular content plan package where we provide clients with X amount of content each month in return for a fixed monthly fee. Now we have got loads of clients signed up on these systems ranging from 12 months up to five years. So that's five years of monthly income that we know we can then develop our business, employ people because we've got that money guaranteed. And it really takes the stress off rather than how I used to do it was just working job to job, not knowing where that next paycheck was coming from, not knowing where the work was coming from, and it was just really unpredictable. But everyone in the industry just tells you that that's completely normal, and you know that inconsistency is just, you know, hey, that's just work, it's the way it's always been. You know, you, you'll be quiet for quite a few months, and then you'll get really busy, and then you'll be quiet for a few more months. But that made me really panic. It was like, well, how is that possibly okay? How do I know I've got enough money to go out, put petrol in my car, any of those kind of things. So you need to create a predictable cash flow and you can do that by signing people on to retainers. So I would 100% look into that because that's the number one reason, the most important reason, how we managed to scale our business so quickly. Within a couple of years, I went from a desk in my parents' living room to owning a house, a studio, employing a team of people, developing this space behind me, and it has been a whirlwind but we could have only have done that because of our predictable cash flow. And I now teach the same thing to students all across the world. It works in any country, no matter what. And as a result of that, we've now had multiple students been able to move into office spaces and studio spaces and think about employing teams of people, even though that a couple of them have only started their video production company at the end of last year, beginning of this year. And already, because they have that predictable cash flow, they can do so much more with it. So spend some time thinking about how that would work within your business and how you can help Help your clients keep coming back to you every single month paying you regularly so that you've got a good cash flow and that's one of the things that does separate freelance life from video production companies because video production companies will work with clients over a period of time and that's how you can scale your business to beyond what you thought was humanly possible initially whereas as a freelancer generally speaking you will just work job to job because you're relying on production companies for the work it's really a case of well when they get the clients to come in then you might get some work if you're picked for that particular job so that's definitely a feast or famine way of working whereas a video production company is a huge plus because if you're doing everything I say when you start to sign these clients you start to look after them you start to warm them up that's how you create solid foundations that will last you forever. Final two points, that is small jobs versus big jobs, and then I will move on to camera gear. So, one thing I see, I had a chat with a, a guy on our course the other day, right here in the studio, and he was saying that he's been turning away a lot of work at the moment, which I was kind of like, that's crazy, because in the other sentence, he was saying he kind of feels like he hasn't got as much work as he could do, and it was kind of like, hold on a second, what's going on here? What he meant was the fact that he was turning away these small jobs because he wants to grow his video production company to be in a household kind of name, working with major global clients. So he thought the way of doing that was to discard all the small people and just focus on those big jobs. And I said to him, that's a really quick way to destroy your business, and here's why. Small businesses and small jobs are generally a lot more kind of run and gun style. They're a lot more off the cuff, they're less well put together, but they're generally really easy and they generally pay fairly well. Admittedly, they probably don't pay as much as the big jobs do, but with smaller jobs as well, or smaller clients like SMEs, things like that, those kind of people are gonna be great for retainer systems. Just keep coming back to you, keep ticking over, and they keep a constant flow of work. Whereas big jobs for major global clients generally will be you know, a huge paycheck, again, in that feast or famine way, in a very short period of time, and it provides you with no consistency whatsoever. Now, here's the thing. You have the complete control over your brand. You have control over what features on your website, you have control over what features on your Instagram pages. So if you're not proud of the work that you're doing for these smaller businesses, because it's just, it's not the, the way you want to push your business, you want to be working for these big global clients, that's completely fine. You can still work for these guys. Just don't post their stuff on your Instagram pages and, and don't promote that stuff. Just do it carefully behind the scenes. And then every so often, when you get a really big job, promote that like crazy. And then you will start to attract more of that kind of work. But you can't just put all of your hopes on that because that's a very feast of famine. That's a very freelancer way of thinking of, I'm only just gonna work with these things because you're cutting out 
I mean, how many, if I was going to ask you, what percentage do you think of businesses are made up of small businesses, small medium businesses, and how many of those are global clients, big house, household names? Probably 1% household names, probably 99% of small SME businesses. So you're going to be fighting against a lot of other people here, and you have all of these people that you're just willing to perhaps discredit because you know oh, it's not where you want to push your brand right now. So that's why working for big companies, I'm not going to say don't do it because we work for a lot of major companies now, but we've built that up on the basis of working with a lot of small companies. These are the people that we've looked after to provide us with stability, to really ensure that our business creates solid foundations and that we have a consistent, predictable cash flow. We're now able to work with these huge global clients. But that's over a period of time. So it's important for you to understand that you're not going to be signing these guys from day one. You can do these, this stuff behind the scenes, just don't promote about it. It's not, brand, it's not brand damaging whatsoever. And actually, you'll be surprised. The, the amount of businesses that I speak to who I think are very, very small businesses by the looks of their social media pages are actually multi-million pound businesses. It, it's absolutely crazy. And they would still be classed as an SME because they're not necessarily like you know your global household names. So that's where sometimes working for big companies is kind of a failing strategy. So I would focus on small and local, especially if you're a beginner. If you do have a good portfolio, still work for these people. It's still a predictable cash flow because you can work with these people on those retainer systems, whereas you're generally speaking not going to be able to do that with these guys. Okay guys, and finally camera gear. Now, you're probably not going to like this, so brace yourselves. I speak to a lot of people who, who come to me and they say, Ross, you know, I need help growing my business. Yep, no worries, we can jump in with that. And then they say, I've just bought the latest FX9, the latest RED, the latest A7S III, whatever. They've spent thousands of pounds in camera gear and they have no work. That's a horrible, horrible situation to be in because you now have no guaranteed income. You don't have a predictable cash flow. You have very few to no clients at all. You might have a good portfolio, but because you're probably lacking in one of the things that I spoke about earlier, or you're waiting for the phone to ring, or those kind of things, you haven't actually been able to utilize your portfolio to get more clients. But you've now got this huge investment in camera gear. And as creatives, we always think, by having the latest stuff, clients are gonna love that. It's gonna produce better quality work. I will promise you right now, clients don't care about half of that stuff. They really don't. And that can be hugely detrimental to your business. Now, we have always stayed debt free. We've invested in our gear once we've got the project coming in. So if we've got a project coming in, let's say, let's say 4,000 pound, and we know that we need a car rig for that project, then we'll take 50% payment up front. We'll use that 50% to buy the car rig. Then we, we own that bit of equipment. We're able to work for this job. We still make a bit of profit everyone's happy and that's the way we've always done it we've always had the projects and then invested in gear rather than just buy the gear thinking when it's going to get us more work and then being a bit lost because we have no work coming in we don't have any kind of predictable cash flow whatsoever do you think a beginner who doesn't know much about camera stuff has only just started out with a 50,000 pound red or ARRI camera is going to produce amazing quality work no do you think that a professional who's got lots of experience, who's worked in lots of different industries, could take a $100, $100 pound camera and make a good video? Yeah, absolutely. That's why, yes, you need to spend time developing your craft, developing your skills, but what's most important is understanding the business side of filmmaking, because without that, you won't sign clients and you'll be in a very same situation just waiting for stuff to happen. And secondly, you don't need to have the best camera gear because generally speaking, they're gonna look at your portfolio and you'll be able to have that chat with them, but they will always buy from you before they actually even see you turn up to the shoot and see what camera equipment you have. So generally speaking, they don't care as long as you can do the job and serve the purpose that that client is particularly looking for. So to summarize on that, just don't spend thousands and thousands of pounds when you don't have a predictable cash flow coming into your business. You will still be able to develop your skills by using any kind of camera, develop a great portfolio using any kind of camera, and build up your camera equipment once you've got the projects coming in so that you're always ahead of the curve rather than in any kind of debt or having spent thousands and thousands of pounds thinking, I don't know where my next project is coming from. So guys, if you have found this video useful, please do let me know in the comments. I reply to absolutely everyone and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. I'm giving away so much free value here. Most people will make you pay hundreds of pounds for this kind of stuff and I'm giving it to you now. I'm giving you the premise of everything that you need to know. 
If you would like to know more information or step-by-step -step walkthroughs of exactly how to do these things, like I said, the Perspective Academy has got over 158 videos covering everything you need to know to do with photography, filmmaking, and most importantly, the business side, so that you can easily sign up people to retainers, have a predictable cash flow, and grow your video production company as quickly as you can. And I guarantee you're gonna make a lot less mistakes than I did having to learn the hard way, and it took us so much longer. If I knew what I know now back then, it would have changed my life so much quicker. I really do wish you all the best and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.